Captain C.A. Richardson. Well, something a little different today for you, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to put you on the pointy end of a boat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You won't be on a dock or a pier or a seawall or wade fishing like yeah. you usually do. Usually, when I'm with C.A., I'm filming for him with the uh, Lateral Media boys, Cameron uh, and Spencer. But today is a little different. I'm actually fishing with Captain C.A. Richardson. Yeah. Stoked. And I'm, and I'm not used to seeing you without a camera. I, know. I am really not. <laughs> So uh, this is going to be camera. this is going to be quite different, but I know you have a lot of fishing experience. You've worked at tackle stores before, oh, yeah. and you grew up where I grew up, so we mm -hmm. know we know this water now. This is probably the northern boundary of where you're used to fishing up here in the Pasco area. But it's I don't um, I don't usually fish out here often. Uh, maybe like a couple times a year. So yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to show me the ropes. <laughs> well. I'm here for tarpon season typically. I'm here every spring naturally for the cobia that are a little north of here. And then sometimes in January, February, and March, some of the best speckled trout fishing oh, in, yeah. in the entire area on the West Coast happens right here. But today we are between fronts and we got some inclement weather coming. So a little overcast, but we, we might try trout fishing for a little while, see what happens, okay. and then we might have to retreat based off wind and weather back into the mouth of the river. Who knows? Fish docks, fish some of the spoils, see if we can catch a snook. Should be good. Well, without further ado, let's jump on board and make something. Let's happen. go. You can always count on speckled trout here. Speckled trout, you can always count on, and then you've got your other mainstays snook, redfish, those, those types of fish are are always pretty common catches here. In, in my opinion, this is maybe one of the better kept secrets uh, for an area so close to a metropolitan complex like the Tampa Bay Zone. So mm -hmm. if you live and work in, in the Tampa area or even the St. Pete Clearwater area where you just think, wow, every boat ramp's packed, there's so many boats, you come here and it's not as bad. It really isn't. It does not get the pressure. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Even during scallop season, yeah. I live in the scallop capital oh, yeah. of, uh, 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 of the world. <laughs> and I do not scallop there. I scallop here. here. And it's not because there's more scallops here than there. It's there's less people doing it here. So uh, I always come down here and scallop. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot more relaxed. And Yes, things have changed a little bit, but they have left, Pasco County has done a really good job of leaving their coast undeveloped. So there's a lot of conservation and uh, zones along this coast. Uh, so you have you have really good fish habitat, you have good nurseries. So to the, to the north, there's lots of little creeks and there's those beautiful sand flats that I film on every year. Yeah. Because you can sight fish on them. I think I was there with Spencer uh, yeah. filming you. And then, and then you've got Anclo Key right in front of you. Yeah. That's one of the best kept secrets too, as far as all the big three. And then if you go just a little bit south, past Fred Howard and stuff like that, even though that's the border between Pinellas and Pasco County, some awesome trout for you. This church shad, we call it jerk shad. is the five inch variety. It, in salt water, it will nearly float. When we get over here, it'll almost be at the top. And if you work it with the rod up a little bit, pulsing it, it'll walk back and forth like a top water. So gotcha. it's like a soft bait top water. It's a bicolor. And that's important because what a lot of novice anglers don't understand is that when you've got a bicolor bait, something that has two colors, a darker back with a white belly, the fish see that farther away than they do a solid color. Doesn't matter if the solid color is white or not. You gotta think in your head, why are bait fish colored white? Does it make them easy prey for, for game fish? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's, it's, it's God's way of making them invisible. It's the hardest color for them to see when fish are down low and they're looking up toward the sky like this. Mm. You see how you see that white belly? Oh, yeah. But you see how the dark is there? They can see this one. But if that was all white or all <laughs> silver or gray, it would be hard to see it if you're a trout sitting that in the grass. Sense. That would be a lot harder to see it against that sky. So white stands out in, in, in darker skies, like nighttime fishing, early light, last light. 
But on, on bright days, white's one of the hardest colors for them to really pick out. But if you pick a bicolor bait like this, you'll be able to do it. Now I picked a short leader, so it would float high as well. But you should be able to work this kind of high in the water column. You don't gotta worry about getting caught up on anything. And the only thing you're gonna have to do is I'm gonna make sure the drag's set a little tighter than normal. Yeah. is to make sure that you really get a good hook set because the one thing about T-rigging baits like this is the fact that you lose plenty of fish. So we're going to start up tight to the bank and we're going to kind of glide out. And like I said, there's more rocks in here than you think there are. So you got to be bump a little bit. But I'm going to put you up on the bow cool. and I'm going to push pull a little bit and we're going to see if we find anything. I might bring a top water up and work a top water. And whatever seems to be exactly. working, that way you're working a, a top water that's a little more quiet, and I'm going to work a top water that's a little bit more, let's just say, loud. Loud. The Duke oh, yeah. Dog. And then we'll see what works. But I've got some more tricks. Once we get out to where that wind was blowing pretty good and creating a disturbance on the surface, then we're going to switch over to a rig I really want you to try out because I think you're going to catch a lot of fish on it. But for now, let's get up let's here. Do this. Let's do this. Ah, uh, he came back for it. Trout for sure, CA. Oh, we can get so this this is a tandem rig, and we also call this the donkey rig if we were bass fishing. But it's the tandem rig, and what I've got here are I've got one leader longer than the other. The baits are the same size, okay, but this one's got a bigger hook in it, so. That's more or less a two-aught hook. That's a three-aught hook. Longer piece of fluorocarbon will make it hang below the second one. And as much as you think you would tangle these, you throw them out there. I'm just gonna throw it right there. And then you're gonna work it like this. Rotate blow. Yep, let it fall a little bit. You're just working over the grass. I see. Watch them as they come in. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. You work this work nice slow. and slow. Mm -hmm through here, I'm telling you, if there are trout around, they, they, it's almost like trout on demand. It's almost that good. This is something new to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little so bit different. Cool. We used to do, there used to be a brand when I grew up called Love Lures and we threw tandems oh, yeah. all the time. For and flounder love, and stuff, right? Flounder well, and trout. But they used to make these two jigs that were tied independently and we used to bounce them just like we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And it used to catch just trout, you know, literally on demand. So wow. you just got to be a little patient because the last tech is a floating bait. So just let it, give it a second to get down and then start darting it over that grass and you'll be shocked. And basically it's one length of leader that's probably about 24, one that's 12. So it's half. Gotcha. And I've got the one swivel tied directly to the braid. The other one slides up the braid. Oh. That way if you get hit, they're not pulling against each other. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let's see. Let's just drift on this one. Okay. Ooh, I had a fish on right there. There it is. He is right. Oh, oh. quick release. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. It's awesome. It works. <laughs> it definitely works. That's so cool. The donkey rig. Something once you get a lot of confidence in. Yeah. You know, from this time of year through the spring, you throw that a lot, especially on flats that have a lot of that slot size under 20 inch trout they go for that like crazy oh, yeah. behaving like a trout yep it's a trout not the quite trout the size boy. i want but special they are beautiful fish aren't they so cool this is actually a trailer bait that came out at ICAST. It's called the Chatter Spike. And it's an articulating single tail that looks like a minnow, but it's really designed for the chatter bait. It's a bass, it's a bass trailer. And it's very hardy. Good looking fish. Um, I love the color of the fish here on Sports Coast Country. But the it, it you'll see that it has kind of a, a the old rat tail like Bass Assassin used to have, but this one just, it has so much more action and it has that little wider body. A little shallower up here and do another drift. So I think the fish want to be in that three, four foot. Yeah. 
six foot here, so I'm gonna get up tight, do another drift. Those cormorants use the shadow of our bow yeah. to not only spook stuff out where they can hunt, but they also know that if you catch a fish and release it, they're gonna get them. And they do take a toll on the trout population, especially when it starts really getting cold and all those birds start getting in these big groups. Sometimes you'll see the cormorants out on the flat and there'll be 100, 200 of them. We've got 200 of them on a flat. That, that flat's gonna get crushed and get back into about four foot of water and do it again. That'll be, that's a good setup. You gotta remember, you gotta have a heavier hook for the back one, lighter hook for the front one. And I can work that because that, the way that one's rigged, I can work that one as shallow. Now, if I put weighted hooks on that, we could fish it in five to seven feet of water. And I have done that but just, it's really a rig that just dominates. Is it a trout or is it a lizard fish? It's a trout, it's just a little one. Yeah. These are juniors here though. Not exactly the size. I like to hold the fish upside down, that way they don't get too crazy. Little guy, little male, I can hear him grunt. Believe it or not, those speckled trout are part of the drum family. So when you think of redfish and black drum, they're actually a drum. Any fish that makes that, that grunting sound to attract more of their same kind, that's what they are, they're drum. He was drumming. Another one. Another one, same size though. These are not slot fish at all. Ah, oh, doesn't want to stay on. Okay. Yeah, definitely a good bite there. He's on it for a second. Gonna have to really set the hook on him next time. Anytime you have Texas rig, you really. It's one of those those lures that you've got to drive. There's just not enough hook gap, you know, so you have to. In lots of cases when I used to fish professionally as a tournament guy, I would just go ahead and work an open jig head rather than Texas rig, even though I know it was costing me in some of the areas where it was real weedy, I would still do it just because my hookup ratio was so much higher. They are chewing though this morning. So anytime you get 90 degrees or more change in wind direction, usually the bike changes. We've had several days of wind that has been north, northeast to northeast to east. And today's the first day it's changed all the way to southeast. And eventually we'll be south in a little while. And when you get those big wind changes like that, they know that there's something new coming. So they usually will chew. <laughs> oh. Yeah. He came back for it. Oh. <laughs> Can't really set the hook on him. Yeah. Little guy. Let's try to cut so, uh, That's That's what that whole tandem rig, donkey rig is all about. Is you got two baits drawing a lot of attention to themselves. And oftentimes you catch two fish at a time. You really do. And once you get the hang of it and you get a lot of confidence in it, that's all you're going to want to use. See ya. Now you got to untangle it a little bit, but it shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Find a couple in here. Ooh, got one there. That was quick. All right. That was quick. First cast too, huh? Basically first retrieve. But another fun trout factoid is that large trout eat smaller trout. And that's why I'm using this trout look-alike um, mirrodine. 
buddy. Do not put a hook in me. Try not to touch this one. But uh, baby trout patterns work really well for trout. So if you have a soft bait that has that green back and that belly that's a little bit white or has a little pink on the chin, all those are really good color patterns to catch trout. How to stick them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. How to stick them. Oh yeah, come on. I'll let you go. Come on. There he goes. Quick release. He didn't want to be held. <laughs> Throwing a different bait now. What is this one I'm throwing, CA? Chatter spike. Chatter spike with a 16th ounce uh, wide gap. There you go. A little bit better. Not our share of them today. ourselves a decent trout there. That little four inch size, same size I have on the on the donkey rig. And that's just a great color. I actually took a darters and I haven't cut down to four inches because it seems like that size is the size of all the white bait out here. Yeah. Look at that. Lots of trout though. Mm-hmm. See you guys. Good hook set on him. A little, little, red. little red, yeah. Look at her, man. Yeah, so cool. Look at his tail. Lit up. Look at that. Look how look how gold he is. See ya. Right on that turn. but the action is nice and steady. Yeah. And at least they're a little more representative of what this coast offers. Stay pretty busy with these guys. Oh yeah. I don't care what size they are, they're on top water. Pretty exciting. They make it good. The Duke dog. At least this one's a chunk. A chunk. It's caught there behind the ear. I do not want that hooked in the ear. Chunk. Still not the size I want. Definitely getting numbers. How many we've caught, but the smell of my gloves says a lot. A lot about today. Switching up, gonna throw paddle tail. See what happens. Sometimes it's just what you're confident in, honestly. Yeah. You know, I have a lot of clients. You can hand them everything in the box as soon as you hand them a paddle tail. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, green lantern. Then they're mm -hmm. happy. Yeah. I got green pumpkin, green lantern. Yeah. Diesel minnow. Keep those out. You might. Okay. Lord only knows we've seen enough pupper fish today. Oh yeah. Goes out right there. Make it weedless. There you go. Tuck the point of the hook in like that. Good to go. Weedless. Cool. Decent. But your confidence paid on and you're hooked up quick. Oh. I don't know, man. Look at this, CA. Eh? This is so <laughs> the confident bait. Yeah, it comes down to sometimes. That's the, the one ingredient. Oh my gosh. Look at that, CA. Eh? We'll take that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Look at that. Very awesome. Nice. All right, let's put this guy. Yeah, let's put him back in the water and try to go on some more. Good deal. There he goes. Nice. The Green Lantern. Smoked it. Ooh. Oh yeah. Is that jack or bluefish? <laughs> no, it's acting like a jack, isn't it? But that's what was ripping around it. Just saw a second one with him. Holy cow, you're not gonna believe this. I have caught two. <laughs> I've got two jacks on the top water. Wow. I don't know if, how many of you guys play cards, but when you play play progressive, it's jacks are better to open. That means you need two pairs of jacks. Looks like I can open. Look at that. You know what we call that? A mess. I gotta get down there and somehow get these guys undone. Make sure I don't get it. Da -da -da. Get rid of that back one first. Maybe. Okay, so the back one's done. Yeah, no worse for wear. These are a lot of fun when they're not 137th size. When they're, when they're about, oh, this is a one pounder. A lot more fun when they weigh about 25 pounds. It's crazy how big those guys get. It is. GG size, oh my gosh. Yeah. Catch a lot of, I catch a lot of them when we're down in Louisiana. I feel like we've, we've gone crappie fishing or something, we've caught so many. I mean, naturally you can't put every one of them on. But I mean, really, when you think about it, who wouldn't like a day where you get three dozen bites? That's crazy. And yet, I'm still unsatisfied. That is gonna be a wrap. Man, action packed today. I mean, non-stop trout bite. We did. We we didn't have the size fish that I had hoped for. Um, you know, pro with that warm front approaching, with all that that rain. But there's no doubt about it. There's no arguing with it. We caught a lot of fish today. We did. We must have caught 35, 40 fish today easily. And we caught them on. I mean, a variety of artificial yeah, lures. It didn't matter whether we were throwing the donkey rig, topwater, pyridine, swim baits, jerk, jerk shads, shads, you name it. I mean, even the chatter spike caught a few today. I mean, every lure we put in the water got eaten. It just got eaten by a lot of those little male fish. You did get one nice trout. On the diesel minnow. On the diesel <laughs> minnow. And, uh, 
you know, you got the one real small redfish there in that oh, one yeah, little corner that. pocket. That's but pretty neat. For all in all, hard to argue with that not being one of the better rod bending days that that you can have between the fronts. Anytime yeah. you're bending a rod that much, it's, it's good. Had a blast uh, fishing alongside CA. We will be uh, fishing again in the near future, so stay tuned for that. If you guys are uh, wanting to get on some fish, definitely hit up Captain CA. Uh, he'll, he'll put you on fish. Snook, redfish, trout, tarpon too, right? Yeah, most most of my seasons now are 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 regulars are in the in the season, but for the most yep. part for the most part. You know, tarpon fishing and, and fishing Louisiana is what I do and then I do a lot of winter trips out of my real small boat uh, up in the back creek single anglers we get way back in there where the deer are running around and the hogs are rooting around and we catch redfish in some of those Stop tall reds. pine situations so it's fun it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun but I do you know I grew up doing this type of fishing flats fishing and I never get tired of it Check out uh, CA's channel. The link's gonna be down in the description box below. And uh, I'll also leave his Instagram in the box below as well. Hope you guys liked the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.